everyone. I'm T. Oliver Reed from the cast of Hades Town on Broadway here with some of my family members, company members from the Broadway cast. Uh, we are the LGBTQIA plus members of of the Hades Town family, and we're here to, to do a little talk for, for Pride this year. I think the first question we want to ask is of everyone what Pride means to you. And I would love if we started with Tom Curtis, who's one of our producers and who has been in this fight for many, many years for the rights of LGBTQIA plus people um, in New York City. And, and, and congratulations for us all, because as of last week with the Supreme Court saying that it is unlawful for uh, any LGBT people to be fired for sexual orientation, it's a huge moment for us. So, Tom, what do you think? And how do you feel about pride? Pride for me is, uh, means living without apology. It means owning our space. It means living joyfully. It means living hopefully and passionately. I came to New York in 1981, the first uh, time AIDS, the word AIDS appeared in the New York Times. I remember being frightened of who I was, who I knew, I, what my capacity for love was, and uh, pride has meant going to memorial services and um, praying for a better tomorrow. It has been uh, attending the uh, Supreme Court arguments in the defense of marriage case and going from when obituaries were the first thing we read in the newspaper to wedding announcements, watching that extraordinary journey and pride means celebrating the fact that black lives matter and that um, the lives of black trans women matter and that um, we know that across 50 states and the District of Columbia, we can now put our wedding photos on our desks and not be afraid of losing our jobs or at least having recourse for that. And pride means being in the company, looking at the faces of the company of Hades Town and living with gratitude that we can be queer and we can celebrate our love for one another. It's um, pride is like Christmas for me. It's, <laughs> it's joy. Who's next? I'll go for it. Pride for me is uh, is that personal turning point um, of turning away from, for whatever reason, the societal pressures of fear and feeling other and feeling less than and turning away from that and turning towards the embracing of what makes me unique um, and what makes me more powerful um, as a gay man. And um, I think it's embracing that unique part of myself and helping others find it for themselves. I think this year, um, like Tom was saying, I hope that Pride can um, expand to include um, Black Lives Matter and Black trans women, and we would not be here without Black trans women. Um, and not to to compare the the struggles of the m marginalized people, but there is a there is a thinking that Pride is a protest has always been more personal to me, and now I think in this new year, I'm, I want to expand that idea. Um, and that protest means more than just fighting for um, things that are um, matter to me. And it's going to be fighting for everybody more in the community. And there's still so much further to go and that there's still so many marginalized people within our larger community of proudly queer people. There, are, There's so much in um, our PLC and especially our like black brothers and sisters and myself and to even see those lives and lives lifted is uh, something that's been really touching and great to see this year um, because I do feel like that was left out of the narrative. There's a place for everyone and everyone really can feel that because it's expansive and we're growing and there's more letters and there's more to what we have, you know what I'm saying? And that is what it's been about from so long ago, you know, like from the first, riots that like it's just got to keep growing and expanding it's interesting that you talk about intersections pride is two things for me one it's celebrating those intersections actually and it's um 
making sure to be loud about those intersections, especially in the fight today. We have to own every single one of them. It's not enough to just wear the gay for a month or wear the black for a month. It's about all of it making sense all the time and being unapologetic about all of it all the time. And the other thing for me, it's about legacy. It's about honoring everybody that came before and knowing that we're not new to this fight. And that's something that even at my age, um, 18, I have to, um, <laughs> I, no, I have to remind myself of, you know, like this, what's so beautiful about this month, this ain't new y'all, but what it's saying is either we're passing the baton or we're exchanging it, but in some way you have to move forward with it. And so it's, it's about celebrating intersection and legacy, honoring legacy. And just, you know, being loud, even, even in your local community with your family too, you know, your pride can also be telling that auntie that saying, no, but you love me. And how does that relate to everybody else around me? It can't just be about me because I'm your nephew, right? So it can happen at, at the micro level too, um, but it's many things. For me, pride is about allowing space for everyone to own who they are and who they may be and who they once were. And talking about that and reading stories of people from right now, from way back when, learning things I never would have because I might not be confronted with it every day. It might not be my reality or the story that I live out in the world. And pride, I think, is just the, the people who have been fearless in this journey. Um, and, and that send us on our way to try to find the same because it's tough out there sometimes, but it's been so amazing to see every year during Pride. It's, it's really just, um, whew, yeah. I think for me, Pride, personally, everything that you guys already encapsulated of the intersections and the history and the where we all come from, for me also is, removing that feeling of shame where young kids who grow grow up not knowing not knowing that they're allowed to love who they love thinking that it's gross thinking that it's not okay you know stuff like that to to be removed and to be in fact a joyous thing you know that we all are so happy to be who we are and love who we love and for that to continue on like for that to be shown i think that is for me pride is very very important for that too we have to honor and remember those whose shoulders we stand on. And this journey is as much for me about being, being a great influence on someone who is younger, who can see me living the way that I live, being the person that I am and say, it's okay. So that as they're growing, they know that there is someone that is like them. Like I want to be like that person there on Broadway, but they're also living, they're living proudly in, in their skin. So it's as much cheering and screaming and laughing, but also still protesting and, and taking up space. And I, I think we all, we all lived in a, in a moment that, you know, whether we were too effeminate or, or too masculine or too this or too that, that we were always a little afraid to just let our hair down and be who we are. This is the time that we get to, to celebrate our, our uniqueness. I'm prideful of that and proud of that and proud to be in this group with you all. What, what advice do you have to young people as they are navigating coming out and, and figuring out who they are in the early years? I would say the world is waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Re no, really. I mean, the world is waiting for all of you. It really took me to realize that I couldn't give my best self in any kind of art, in any kind of conversation until I was fully comfortable with who I was. I felt like every, like the floodgates opened when I said the words. And oftentimes we don't, we don't think about the value of saying those words to your family or to your friends. You know, you just sort of, even though you're living it and you're living a certain thing, those words really speak into existence freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, I would say the world is waiting for you to say those words and to join your family, <laughs> join your family and, and release your art. You know, that, that's how I feel about it. When I came out, I feel like the, the world's focus for me was much smaller. Um, and I think there's such an amazing opportunity now because I, I, I grew up in Brookfield, Wisconsin, outside of Milwaukee, and there was one other person who had come out in high school. And, and I feel like 
he kind of took my thunder and I was like, well, now I can't come out. But there was like no, there was no community. Um, but the, I think right now, you know, we all have the benefit of the Broadway community, which just is like filled with beautiful people. The youth in, in, um, in general are just so ahead of the curve on, on these social issues. And I think they're, they're embracing our community. So I, I encourage people to, to find those pockets of support that are popping up all over the world because they exist now. And there is an open-mindedness to our community and there is a support and love like um, that's higher than it's ever been in history. There is still such a thing as, as your chosen family. Hopefully you'll have both. Um, but if you can't find it with your immediate family, find it within your community because more than likely it will, it will now exist. And that is like the greatest luxury to have for somebody who's considering trying to come out. I think with what you're saying also about with chosen family and your, and your birth family, when you come out, there's, there, there's sometimes a lag in how people, how quickly they accept. And I think you have to, with some families, we have to remember it's like, it took me 15 years to come out. It's going to take them more than 15 seconds to say, okay. You know, most of the times our moms know it just happens, but whether they do or they don't, it's like there, there, there is a chosen family who is out here and waiting for you if it takes your birth family a while to understand. I had a friend, uh, literally one of my mother's friends emailed me on Facebook a couple of days ago because she wanted to know what the I and the A were for. She's like, I know what LGBT are, but I don't know what the others are. So I, I explained her. She's like, that's great. I'm an ally. She's like, I just want to know so that I can help explain it too. But it's like, and this is someone from a small town in North Carolina who is an ally who is probably more quiet than the people on the other side who are screaming. But to know that there are people there who are waiting for you to accept who you are and will love you unconditionally. I told a lot of people uh, and I remember telling my sisters and I didn't know what to say and I was kind of waiting and they went, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> wow. Uh, and you start going, why did I wait so long to do that? That was the most relieving moment of my life to just know that there are people who are ready for that. You know, I think this new generation has... Um, it's really exciting that they have something like social media and they can see what a functioning and beautiful, you know, queer couple looks like. I did not know what that even really was. Um, there was a few television shows and now, you know, there's, there's so much more representation in television and so much more representation on stage. And that is so important seeing worlds that you fit into. Um, I really appreciate so much of what even like Netflix has done for this community, you know, it's, I think that's so special. Yeah, to, to sort of um, echo on something Ahmad said earlier, it's you can't be your best self unless you love yourself and your capacity for love is an essential part of who you are. So welcome to the club, find joy in it. And there are people waiting to love you. I told my parents I was gay in 1982, and it was similar um, to what others have said. They said, you know, we've been talking about it since you're four years old. <laughs> I, I surprised absolutely no one. And then I was just like, you've been talking about me all these years? Uh, but I have a brother who's an auto mechanic, and uh, Jimmy and his wife, Nora, have a, a son, Colin, who is gay. He came out when he was, I think, 13. And uh, Colin does drag. And just about a month ago, I heard my brother say to Colin, oh, you know, your wig is in the drag room. And they literally have a drag room in this suburban house on Long Island. That's a phrase I never thought I would hear in my Irish Catholic family. And I just thought, wow, we've come so far. There's a community that wants to love you. And we can't love you unless you love yourself and you can't love yourself unless you accept who you are and announce it to the world. Yeah, piggybacking on Tom and Ahmad of loving yourself. I mean, I think that's very, very important. And also having a family and your chosen family. You know, when I came out, my mom immediately was like, this is not who I thought you were. This is like, now you're going to have a much harder life. So her worries piled on top of my discovering myself. But the next day she sent me a link of, and it was like, 
how to talk to your lesbian daughter. And I was like, okay, well, this, she's trying. That's nice. And don't be afraid to, to come out and don't let anyone tell you who you are. I had a lot of queer women actually be like, future lesbian, ooh, nice sandals. And that made me go back in the closet further, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, so be, let yourself be whoever you want to be and don't let anyone else dictate that for you. Yeah, speaking to that, um, I didn't have a, a clean coming out, but I didn't have a queer relationship until I was 21. Um, I was always a big ally and I thought it was so cool because <laughs> cause again, to see someone who's like, this is my deal. Like, this is how I feel. This is, these are the people I'm attracted to. Um, this is the life I want to lead. And I was like, yes, I applaud that. And I do think as a lot of people have said that you, you may not have the support of those closest to you immediately or maybe ever. And so I think knowing that you are not alone and that you have so many people far and wide being able to ask for support when you are in the midst of discovering yourself is can be really hard asking for help can be hard but people it's such a gift to those who want to help you so you can feel like you have a big net to fall into when you feel like you're falling the open arms that we all have for you and for ourselves and for each other um that that I think can get you through the toughest of times. Um, and I am so blessed and pleased and happy to be part of these communities that want to embrace everyone. So we got your back. A quick question. I mean, Jesse, you brought this up. How, how does everyone identify? I mean, I, I identify as gay male, but I know that we're in a world now that there, there are many different ways that you can and, and do identify. So how does everyone? Gay male, yeah. Gay male. Gay male. Oh, oh me. Um, I'd say queer, pansexual, female. Uh, lesbian, female. Look at this family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so what do we, what what do we think, or what do we hope is going to be next for for our community as as far as acceptance for ourselves, for, for those who are, are familiar to us from the outside world? I mean, what, what do we hope to see start to change once we, are, once we are in our new normal outside of these pandemical times? I hate to take it to a dark place, but I will say I hope we tear down this otherness within our community. I'm so, literally I'm sick of hearing about our Black trans women being murdered by people that look like me. Mm -hmm. It's breaking my heart. We have to get rid of it. We've been othered enough. We need to stop doing it to each other. And I hope that is wiped out. Nobody has time for it anymore. Life is too short. We got to stop doing that to ourselves. Even within the lesbian community of like people being like, oh, well, I don't date bi people or I don't date trans women. Like that whole othering of our community just makes it worse. Yeah for everyone else who's trying already to divide our entire community as a whole, and we are helping them by doing that. And I, I agree with you, tear it down. I hope that will yeah, bring us all more together and rallying around each other versus the us versus them. And that's sort of like the, hopefully the more joyful side of tearing that down um, is just seeing more of the people that live on this planet. <laughs> Yeah. And it's not just going to be focused on one group that looks a certain way and acts a certain way, but that we can see representation across the board and all around the world. That's going to be so important as well for children. Watching my, my boyfriend's niece watch Moana versus like Snow White all the time. You know, we're starting to see more and more of, you know, BIPOC stories and queer stories. So got to keep it going. For sure. But I, I would also say, I think that we really have to genuinely love and support one another intra-community, as Ahmad was saying. But I also think we have to harness our rage and the notion that our rights are fragile in any way is just unacceptable anymore. I mean, yes, we're celebrating a great Supreme Court decision that was 6-3, but that should be 9-0. We shouldn't be worried that on November 3rd, our rights hang in a balance, that uh, some of our marriages can be undone or that a woman's control over her own body can, can 
be taken away. I genuinely believe that if we celebrate one another and stop dividing ourselves and erase hate within our community and really focus on the forces that would divide us and strip us of our rights, that is an essential part of the future. Because we should not be apologizing for anything. We shouldn't be waiting for scraps from the table of opportunity. It's about insisting that the next generation does not have to fight the fights that we fought. Exactly, which means we have to vote. We have to make sure that the White House is, you know, embracing pride again. We have to make sure our leadership is embracing um, all of us and not encouraging this division, this otherness. Um, and I, we have to recognize that, that, the, that our leadership tries to stay in power by creating this otherness. And as soon as we recognize that as a manipulation, um, in order for them to maintain power, we can recognize, like, begin to dismantle that. We can dismantle that with love, and we can dismantle that with an embracing of one another and not a division. The hope for the future um, can only happen if we vote. I mean, the fact is, in November, gay marriage and, and those rights are still on the ballot. Unfortunately, you know, like Martin Luther King said, like the bend towards justice is long, that we're still on the arc of, and we have to remember that. I hope that we get, we get to the place where it's, when someone says that they're gay, it's it ends from someone else with an exclamation as opposed to the question, not that you are, but of course you are, and that that's fine. The LGBTQIA plus community, that we have to work with those who are also considered minorities in this country, because yeah. the thing that I always feel is like, we think that it's one group at, that, that people are, are targeting, but they're targeting them until they turn on you. And so that we are, we are standing up for Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, these anti-Semitic moments that keep happening that they no longer happening. Gay people are being abused and beaten. Equity is taken away from us that we are all in this fight together. They can all look at each other and really be able to say, of course you're gay and keep moving. I have to run. I love you all. Bye, Tim. I would say like my pretty personal goal is uh, my like third intersection is that like I'm a Christian man and like am seeing what the the ideologies of just surrounding the LGBT communities in the in the churches have always been hard for me. I'm ready to like push for those conversations. I think that that's actually what's holding a lot of our legislation and and politics. You know, is surrounding something that is um, very unchristlike. Our, Amen. Yeah, Amen. Cherie, I am so thankful that we met. I am thankful that your mother sent you that letter the day after you, you told her that you were, you were gay. You are, you are such an exceptional person. You are such a giving person. Your smile brightens every room. And I could not imagine being a part of this show and not having you and your voice and your gratitude and your love every day that I see you at the theater. So to you, I'm thankful Thank for you. you. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna give this one to Ahmad. Um, I wish I could give it back to T, but I feel like that would be very unfair. <laughs> be T, I love you. I love you so much. I'll give you love in person. Ahmad, I love you so much. And you have brightened our, our lives from like tech, from rehearsals to performances. Like every time you're back there, you're just like, so this bright light that like shines I never need a flashlight because you're just beaming you're on this like amazing source of of person and soul and thank you for being you and you know we wish you love and we want you to come back um, and <laughs> <laughs> I want to <laughs> yeah I love Anthony as well um, but we want we want you all we want all of you here <laughs> thank you I love you so much um, and keeping it moving, I will always say to you, I mean, I'm starstruck every time I'm in a room with you and I have chills because my heart swells to see you. The thing you were talking about earlier about seeing people who are doing it that inspire you, like you have always been that for me since I found out you were going to be in the room. Um, you live so boldly and 
you wear your heart on your sleeve, but you just, it, you're such an inspiration to me. And so I'm grateful for you and um, every moment I've gotten to spend with you or hear you speak on waking up. <laughs> and somehow it got back to me again before the end. All right, that's fine, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to, to Tom. On, on every level, you, you are the man that I hope that I am growing into. You're fearless and you are loving and you are kind and you are stalwart and you stand up and you speak your mind and you look at you, you have fought for so many for so long. And I hope I am standing on your shoulders as much as I get to stand on the shoulders of Andre De Shields and that I get to stand on the shoulders of Stanley Wayne Mathis and all these men that I hope to emulate when I, when I first got into the city. So I thank you for continuing to love the love of your life. Uh, I thank you for, for spending this time with us and being so open and, and gracious with us at every turn of this journey with Hadestown. You all know how much I love you. Anthony, uh, we were on the phone for over an hour just this past week. And um, I'll never forget the day that you went on as Hermes. And, you know, I, I was worried the costume would fit. But when you walked out, we all knew we were in for a great, great performance. And it was thrilling to see your artistry and your confidence and your charisma on display. But more recently, I am grateful for your politics, your passion, your intellect, your truthfulness, your conviction that your voice needed to be, needs to be raised and heard and honored. And when you talk about Christian values in this Zoom call, it doesn't surprise me because I think that you walk the walk and I can't wait to see what happens in your extraordinary career going forward. Um, and I'm gonna cheat um, because I get to watch all of you do your thing in your different roles. And I stand in the back of the theater and I cry all the time. I mean, I'm just, I cry because I'm blessed. And I, I, I will be selfish. You all know that I, I did lose the love of my life. And pride is holding your husband's hand and saying goodbye to him. And pride is watching a company, a family of a production sing to you and tell you, you they love you and they're holding you in their hearts. And I will never forget the strength that all of you have given me. I love you. I love you so much, Sean. Thank you. Um, wow. Um, I mean, one, I'm enormously grateful for this entire company and this meeting and just like getting to feel this love is unbelievable. Um, and Jesse, I am so grateful for your light and your presence. And when I first came to the theater, like a scary time when like, I don't know what the world I'm, I'm going into and I'm the first, I'm the only new person. And I, um, I just felt your love and your presence and you're so giving, um, and watching you with other people. Um, there's just no end to what that is. Um, I love watching you ball your eyes out every time you're on that stage. I don't know how you do it. There's so much life in you and you want to speak for the underdog and like, you know, what that is and you give so much um, of yourself for other people. Uh, and that's just been like a blessing to witness. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to say back up to you that you were my Orpheus. That I know. Oh. It was always such a whirlwind. I mean, T knows more than anyone. Like, and well, Cherie. <laughs> Cherie knows maybe even more than anyone. <laughs> the first year of this show, I just remember that 
there had been moments in the show as Eurydice that had always been a little like difficult for me to navigate acting wise. And I just remember one of our last rehearsals, just the way that you came to the material, it like literally hit me. I was like that <laughs> crying every day on stage, you know, like that happens when something hits me that's real and you gave voice to something within that text that I had heard so many times that made it real for me in a way that it had never been. And that was, I thank you so much for that. And Ahmad and I had a small moment as well, another Orpheus <laughs> in Alabama. <laughs> and similarly, I've been so touched just in this short year of my life through some of the hardest things that have happened to a lot of us and to the country and the world because the strength, as Tom said, that I think we've all given each other over this year can't be, can't be quantified, can't be replicated. It's just the biggest gift. I want to do a little shout out to... Uh to Tim as well, who organized <laughs> the entire Pride Parade. Though we had a Pride Parade on stage and Andre was our Grand Marshal and Pat, our, um, our light board, our head electrician, designed these Pride lights on our it's set. Gorgeous. The fact that we can do that and like celebrate us. And T, thank you for this idea. This is the latter part of, of initial ideas, I think, that came from Sharif. This is uh, not, not only the LGBTQIA plus members of our, of our family, but the Hadestown family at large. Uh, such a loving group. And I, I think however you identify and whatever your pro pronouns are, we love you. We wish you a happy pride. We raise our cups to you. Own your freak flag. <laughs> Happy, Pride. Happy Pride! Just so you guys know, I added these with gaff tape. This oh, is brown wow. gaff tape and black gaff tape. So. Come on, gaff. <laughs> Amazing. Good.